in life. I started at the bottom, made my way up. In the league, I started at the bottom. I made my way up. In college, I started at the bottom. I made my way up. So I've, I've been at the bottom. And I've shown time and time again that I can work my way up. And, and so once they begin to trust me, they listen to what I could. The biggest, ain't no punks. Like, we not going to be a punk. Uh, we ain't going to be a bully, but we won't be a punk. And, and to me, that's that's the biggest key in sports. You get in that locker room, you 21. Shit, you got dudes 35. They going to try to punk you the first day. And, and you show them. Nah, ain't no bitch in me, bro. All right, welcome to another exciting edition of Conversations with a Legend. I'm LeVar Arrington, and this week's guest, well, it's a pretty interesting one because, well, we work together. The so, best guest of all. Yeah, so I was I was saving you and Plex for the holiday season. Um, it's kind of, I guess it's got to be weird doing an up-on-game show as an up-on-game guy, uh, but... This is this is long awaited, and this is the one that that well, I'm super pumped to do. We have T.J. Hushmanzada uh, from Oregon State, born and raised in California on the playgrounds, is where he spent most of his days chilling out, Max, and relaxing, all that good stuff. And then one day, uh, uh, oh no, that's different. That was a fresh Prince Bel Air. But this is T.J. Hushmanzada, played for the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, Pro Bowler. Uh, what's up, bro? What's going on, man? Man, what's happening, man? I'm Glad you asked me to be on. My pleasure, brother. My pleasure. What? What? I mean, I would ask you, what are you doing these days? But I know you're up to becoming a, a media media mogul. Um, you do several different different deals in the media market. Just let us know. Let everybody know what's TJ Hushmanzada up to these days. I mean, really, what I'm up to that matters the most is uh, trying to be a great father and husband and a family man to my to my family that that for me is first and foremost anything after that is secondary but we obviously the show with yourself and plex that we do every saturday which hopefully we can start doing more than every saturday and then i do a podcast called up on game with orlando skandrick and uh lauren sesselman just just doing those things training guys uh for the combine and the training turns into friendships and relationships, mentorship that pretty much lasts a lifetime. You know, mm -hmm. you, you meet a guy and I'm getting started with a new group um, as we speak. And you spend so much time with them that even over the course of the season, you start to give advice, whether it's on the field, at home, relationship advice, because we've been through things. Uh, you know, we don't want you hitting the speed bumps that we hit. And you, you give them the advice, whether they take it or not, you you give it to them. When you when talking about those things that you do and and tying that into, OK, you do media, which means you understand what what having a message and having uh, an idea of what it is that you represent play a major part of of who you are when you're having those conversations with the guys that you're you're training and getting them ready for for the combine and getting them ready to play in, in the league do you do you ever talk to them about moments like not not letting a day pass or not wasting a moment and if so do you have a moment in your life where you can draw from that says, you know what, I've been through this. The reason why I'm so passionate about things that I do is because I had this type of experience, this type of moment, and it led to me being able to achieve and do the things that I've been able to do that now have led for the opportunity to be able to talk to you guys about what it is you need to be thinking about, what it is you need to be doing um, as you move forward in your life. Well, let, let, let's talk about the, the guys that I that I work with. We we talk about moments often, and, and what I tell them is this: and, and you were guilty of it, as was I. We take moments for granted when you're in the moment and, and you're playing and you're going through the process. 
And I tell a man like, y'all need to cherish this. Don't be such in a rush to get to the end that you don't enjoy the process that got you to the end. And I can remember my first mini camp practice after we got, I can still remember that and it's over. Cherish it, enjoy it. But but for me, I don't know if I had one moment, LeVar. It, it, it's, I wasn't a guy that played sports growing up like a lot of guys did. I, I wasn't a guy that dreamed of playing the NFL like a lot of guys did. I I made it and I'm I'm grateful for that. I'm fortunate. But it wasn't a dream of mine. I, I wasn't because it wasn't realistic. I wasn't a high school all American. Why wasn't it? But why wasn't it realistic? Like, when did it turn to I can do this in football? Like, when did football become when did it become a thing? When I felt like I really can do something with it was when I was in junior college. Um, I played one year of high school football. One year I was a running back. I thought I was the best player on the team. The coach thought I was like the fifth or sixth best player on the team. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know what the fuck you looking at. Right. right. And so. <laughs> It wasn't realistic. Um, I went to junior college. I was third string. Thought I was the best. I'm like, what the fuck are the coaches looking at? These dudes, mm -hmm. they not better than me. And my best friend to this day, he was a starter. He got hurt. The backup got arrested. I started. I was third wow. string. Started the first game because of, of what happened. First play of the game, I bombed somebody for like 70. Touchdown. Wow. And... After my first season of junior college, the head coach, Frank Mazzotta at Cerritos College, he comes to me and was like, make sure you're going to school. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do because you're going to get out of here with a scholarship. I didn't graduate from high school. And he's telling me to make sure right. I go to school. I'm like, make sure I go to school. I didn't go to school in high school. You think right. I'm going to school in college? <laughs> and when he told me that, that could be my moment because I buckled down. I went to school. And I did what needed to be done. And I'm not a dummy by any means. I just, I didn't want to go to school. So in high school, I didn't go. Football was over. I was on the basketball team. They kicked me off the basketball team for grades. I said, if I can't play basketball, why I'm going to school for? So I stopped going. And, and, and so after that first year of Cerritos, that probably was my mama where I was, ah, I probably can make it. I, I can do something with myself. And I buckled down and started to apply myself the way I should have when I was younger. How, how do you think, do, do you think that maybe you might have appreciated it a little differently? Um, may, I mean, some may say more, but do you think that when you got the opportunity to go to Oregon State and, and continue playing and, and ultimately getting, getting the opportunity to play at the National Football League level, do you feel like not having it, not playing it, having different, you know, different priorities, different things that you were focused in on? How much of how much of that played into your approach to the game? Because those who have ever watched you play know that like you're a super passionate dude in the way that you play. You're the same dude in everyday life, like you're a laid back dude, but you're super passionate about everything you do so so how did that translate into i'm actually going to get an opportunity to play at a at a bigger school you know how 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 is tj approaching that i mean for me the fact and we'll never know but the fact that i didn't play coming up like to this day like i love football to this day like I'm watching every game that's on TV. It doesn't matter who it is. It can be division 15. If it's on TV, I'm going to watch it. I just have a love for the game of football. And had I played my entire life, like a lot of guys did, I don't know if that would be there. Mm. We, we will never know, but right. I really enjoy the game of football. Um, I believe I was talented mentally and physically and, and i think that mental part kind of people gloss over that because you can't see how talented a guy is mentally mm -hmm. and i believe i was talented mentally and, and and that's why i'm able to mentor the kids that i am and we go over life we go over football but 
you're going to be living life longer than you play football. So we're going to go over life longer than we go over football. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just, for me, coming from where I come from, my mama got four kids. The only one of them graduated from high school, the youngest one. And, And so we we grew up to where I mean when I was 13 years old I did whatever I wanted to do I came home when I wanted to come home um I was out (laughs) all parts of the night into the morning when I was 13 and so I was forced to grow up um a lot sooner like when I look at my kids at 13 to think how they were and how I was (laughs) I couldn't imagine them being out till two, three in the morning like I was at 13. But what was you doing? I was just in the streets hustling, man. You, 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 you're around older people and the things that they do and the things that they have, you want to do and you want them for yourselves. And so you just start. There's a couple of dudes. They, they, they take a liking to you and they kind of show you the way. Mm-hmm. And. I followed along and it was just something that it was normal. You, if you grew up in a hood, when, what you see the older guys do, they, they got the nice cars. They got the pretty women. You want that. And, and so I, I was just in the hood, just, just hustling. Never, never really um, thought about any consequences or anything like that, because it was, that was just normal for me. That was normal. Was like, wake up, the sun's going to be out. That's normal. And luckily enough, uh, I didn't get in it deep enough to where I'm not talking to you. Yeah, true. Now, when you was out there, how does that translate into sports and athletics? How did you develop talent like, or, or know that you had a talent to play? Like, where did that come from? Did it, did it happen during this time? When, when did that happen? I've, I've, one, I've always been an overly confident person. Um, I truly believe in myself. I have self-belief, <laughs> maybe unrealistic, but I, I have it. Um, anything that I do, I'm competing in. It, uh, we play checkers. We play connect four. We play chess, <laughs> which I don't know how to play. But okay. if I did, I'd probably be the best once I learned it. <laughs> We're going to work on that. I've always been super competitive. Now, the sports thing obviously we watch sports when it's on TV, you watch it. And I've always been athletic. I I was always fast. I didn't get slow till I got to the NFL mysteriously. Mm. I was a fast kid my entire life. And then I got to the league and they dubbed me slow. Mm. Um, But sports was something that I always liked, but you can't play sports if you're not going to school. Mm -hmm. And so it was something that I wasn't able to do because I wasn't I wasn't a student really. Like you weren't developing skill. Through the years, you just play cold turkey. Yeah, like straight up and down, like I didn't four years of high school. I went probably two and a half years of school of like school, school, my sophomore year. I didn't go at all. And so I, I wasn't in school. You couldn't play. If you're not in school and so, but I was always fast and explosive and how, you know, (laughs) because it was, it would be dudes that ran track and we would race like growing up. So we would race race each other. Okay, I was always one of, if not the fastest. Uh And then, you know, we play recreational basketball. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. Okay. Okay. And so I knew that, but it just, I couldn't play like, I never forget, man, all my homeboys that I grew up with, man, they uh high school graduation and shit. And so they graduate. I go to the graduation. I'm just watching. And we I'm supposed to graduate with them, but I'm just watching. And then <laughs> they all leave and go to grad night. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> I'm about to be bored. I had nothing to do. I couldn't go to grad night. Mm-hmm. And just just right. little things like that, man. Like, right. I missed out on so many things, but it made me who I am because of being out there in them streets at such an early age it's survival of the fittest and yeah. so you can be taken advantage of if you're not with the right people or you just don't understand how things go and luckily for me like i said i made it out and did you I have was, a moment during that time that that was like this ain't it oh yeah man there's some 
some stories, bro. Like I, we never talked about me. It's funny. Me and my brother were just talking about this. I got a younger brother, but he was always bigger than me. He's two years younger than me, but he was always bigger than me. And he's still bigger than me to this day. Um, had a little problem and uh, had a group of people that didn't like me for whatever reason, but my brother was cool with them. And so they kind of rolled up on me. Um, did some things that sh- like they, 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 they shot at me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was pissed. <laughs> and so I told my brother and he handled it for me and he's younger than me. And so that moment was like, I just look back at certain things like, fuck, I got so lucky, man, with so many different instances mm. of that I'm able to talk to you. Fuck, I remember watching you at Penn State in an all white uniform jump yeah. over people. And now we homies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, but for you and even Plexico, y'all been anointed, I would say, since you're at least 15, right? Maybe younger. Right, at 15. <laughs> This was the furthest thing from my mind. And this is what me and you talk about. I try to tell these kids, like, you can be the best right now, LeVar. You can be the worst right now, me. And you can still make it. It's mm-hmm. up to you. Mm-hmm. You decide what you're going to become. It's up to you. So you don't, you don't think that success is by accident? No, no. Like, I'll be honest with you, man. Once I started playing football and all that street shit, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm done. And it's still in me, but I'm, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. No, man. People will tell you, man, I will kill myself trying to get better. Like I'm, we work out. I'm not letting you outwork me. One of us are going to quit and it's not going to be me. And so When I work, I'm going to work. I'm not going to let you outwork me. And to think of this, I could have worked harder and I didn't do all I could have done. But no, it by accident, hell no, success is not by accident. You got to work and go get it. Mm -hmm. So and working to go get it, do do you feel like when you're talking to the guys that you're mentoring and, and that you're training and you're preparing, do you feel like they can grasp the concepts that you put in front of them because today's young cats are they're a little different man like there's still some dogs out there and there's still some cats that have gone through some things but largely in part this is a very different type of generation of of young guys so how do you how do you approach these conversations cuz can they even relate to what you've gone through a lot of them, I don't even tell them what I've gone through unless they ask me. I don't bring it up. Some will look my story up and tell me like, oh, man, I didn't know you graduated. From, you didn't graduate from high school, man. How'd you make it? To-? And so then we start to talk. But from the outset, I get to know them and you, you build a trust. And, and I just tell them, like, everybody can play football, man. Like, you're not the only one. that Everybody can play. What's going to separate you? What makes you any different than anybody else that wants to play football? You may be slightly more talented, but are you as tough? Are you as smart or smarter? Um, Are you willing to do things that others aren't willing to do? And once they start to trust you, they believe what you're telling them. In life, I started at the bottom, made my way up. In the league, I started at the bottom. I made my way up in college. I started at the bottom. I made my way up. So I've I've been at the bottom and I've shown time and time again that I can work my way up. And and so once they begin to trust me, they listen to what I could. The biggest ain't no punks. Like we not going to be a punk. Uh, We ain't going to be a bully, but we won't be a punk. And and to me, that's, that's the biggest key in sports. You get in that locker room, you 21, Shit, you got dudes 35. They going to try to punk you the first day. And, and you show them. Nah, ain't no bitch in me, bro. All right. So there's the there's the idea of, of that passionate approach. You've also been able to brand yourself. I mean, obviously, appearance-wise, you don't look like 
the normal dude that that is balling out on cats. Like uh, first thing people going to try to figure out is what is TJ Hushman's out? That's the first thing they're going to try to figure out. Then the second thing they're going to try to figure out is how is he doing what he's doing? Um, and it's funny because when people take take things for granted, you know, that that could catch up to you. And I think maybe sometimes at, at points in time you dealt with like, like he can't be as good as I am. You know what I mean? Like he don't look nothing like me. So therefore he can't play this game the way that I play this game. But that also turned into a a branding opportunity, like the way your hair is, the way you you did things. It was so unique to TJ Hushman Zada that it became like your calling card. Like everybody knew who you were. Everybody was like, that's TJ. So you were branding before, before all of this became a thing. How do you feel about branding? How do you feel, you know, were you aware of how you, you branded yourself and, and what would that be? How, how do you advise guys on how to build their brands, their personal brands, as it applies to who they are? For me, zero awareness. And, and that was, that's probably one thing I wouldn't say I regret it. I just wish I had done it a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, I was late to social media. I'm talking very, very late. Yeah, I know. Um, the, the branding part of it, I didn't care about any of that. All I cared about was football. That's all I cared about. Um, it didn't, it was just football, 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 football for me. Um, like my wife would tell you, bro, this is a true story. We used to argue about taking vacations. I'm like, I'm not taking a vacation. I can't work out on a vacation the way I need to work out. Mm-hmm. And she would be so mad at me. I'm like, you can take a vacation. I'm staying here so that I can work out. I need to train. I can't just run on a treadmill and get ready to go. I got to train the way I need to train. And so we wouldn't even take vacations my first half full years in the league because I felt like I was going to hurt myself. The branding part of it, I tell them, is the way sports are today. Your body is your business. Conduct yourself the right way at all times so that people want to work with you, the person, not just you, the player, Mm -hmm. because the person is going to outlast the player. And so we, we go over that because I didn't do that. I didn't have anybody telling me this. And I'll be honest, I didn't give a damn about Brandon until you started talking to me about Brandon. I didn't give a fuck about no damn Brandon. I'm who I am. But the more you talk about the guys you work with in the branding, it is important because football ends for all of us and you, the person, can continue in life in the business world because you develop stuff when you were the player. So now that you understand it, do you look at little crew and say, oh, this is how I'm, this is how I'm wiring up. Or do you, I mean, you have daughters that play at LSU play softball. You've had a successful run of, of raising your own children the right way to be successful. Your youngest, one of your younger ones is a boy. How does that play a part in like that awareness of branding? Now, how does that play a part in how you're handling things with them? You know, it's kind of crazy because my crew, he'll be eight next month. And uh, like, when I, when can I start an Instagram page? When can I get on TikTok? And, it, and it's like, he he gets it. I don't want to rush into it too soon just because mm-hmm. I'm protective of people mm-hmm. that I care about, especially my kids. And so, you know, you got trolls and I don't, I just can't deal with that just because of my, uh, my personality. Mm-hmm. But I'm cognizant and I'm aware of it because as we just spoke, it is what it is. You got to be aware of everything you do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how young you are. Oh, I was 13. I was 12. I made a mistake. These decisions follow you the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And so we're aware of it. And I I won't 
he's going to be a kid. I'm, I'm not going to, oh, do, but I will be aware of me personally, whether he makes anything out of sports or not, that that's not the point. But if he does, um, we will be ready because I've been through this. Um, I've seen people, I mean, Chad is a perfect example of branding himself, wow. but, but I don't think he really even understood it. Brand- huh? No, no. Wow. He was just doing it to have fun. Wow. And voila, he was branding himself, but he didn't know he was doing that. That wasn't purposely. It was just to have fun. Right. And, and, and so, and he might be of the last 30, 40 years outside of prime, the most popular player in league history, really. Yeah. The, I mean, everybody knows who he is in every walk of life that doesn't even care about sports because he branded himself the right way. Yeah. And it was, I believe by accident. Mm. If you knew what you know now and you're right there with him, would you have done anything differently? LeVar. And this is, this is the God honest truth. I've always been an outgoing person. I've always been outspoken. And so me and Chad went to college together and people will tell you, I was a talker, not Chad. I was the talker, but I felt like Chad experienced success in a league before I did. Mm-hmm. Had I come out and done those things, they would have said, I'm trying to mimic him. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't do any, the dancing and the celebrating that that's not me, but the shit talking it, that's me all day. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do any of that because I didn't want to be labeled as, oh, he's trying to be like Chad. Huh? That's really me. And I eventually, I'm going to talk shit. I'm going to do that. The dance, but see everything Chad does, it's all in good fun. He just wants to have fun. My shit is me and you, let's go. You beat me, I dap you up after the game. But during that game, well, we trying to kill each other. True. All right, so speaking of having that approach, obviously you you played for the Cincinnati Bengals um, and a host of other teams, but that time with the Bengals was, that was like legendary what you were able to do, you and Chad. And then there were a couple other guys that would be a part of what you guys had going on. I'm, a, I'm from Pittsburgh. So just like you said, you saw me playing. I not only saw you play when you was in, in college and, and, and just respected how, how well you guys did that, that led, what was it? 90, 99. I, I believe it was 99 that yeah, the same year I was in. Uh, but, but also I'm a Steeler fan. So I always seen you play and and particularly when you played against the Steelers. And then there's the story of TJ Hutchmanzada after the game cleaning his cleats off with a terrible towel. And no one ever understood or knew the story of how did TJ Hutchmanzada in Heinz Field get a hold of a terrible towel to be wiping his shoes off after a victory and, and possibly an improbable victory. Maybe it wasn't. I, I You guys knew you were going to win. It seemed just, just walk me through the story of the terrible towel. Cause that, I mean, that was when Hush, who's your mama became a mm-hmm. thing after you did that. And, and Pittsburgh people start calling you, Who's your mama? They hated me up there. <laughs> they hate like I, 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 I'll see Steeler fans to this day, and they'll be like, "I'm not gonna lie, man, you a good dude, but I really hated you when you did that." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, it was number one. I enjoy playing Pittsburgh because they were so good defensively, and it would bring the best out of me. I've had some of my best games, if not my best games against the Steelers. I've also had my worst game against the Steelers as well. So it kind of comes full circle. Mm-hmm. But we're on elevator. Team hotel, getting ready to take the bus to the game. And the hotel we stayed at, I believe everybody's is huge. We're on, a, we're on elevator with Steeler fans. 
they talking trash to us, but it's all in good fun. Me and Chad. And uh, dude had a turbo towel. I'm like, let me get let me get that for twenty dollars. He said, no. I said, I give you a hundred. Gave him a hundred dollar bill. He gave me the towel. So during <laughs> pregame, I got the towel as a streamer. Wow. As we're warming up, Marvin sees it. He comes and tries to take it from and me. And Marvin's I, from Pittsburgh, was yeah. a Pittsburgh coach. So he yeah. understood what you was doing. He tried to take it from me. And I, he snatched it out my thing. And I snatched it back. I'm like, no, nah, Marvin, I paid $100 for this. TJ, you <laughs> can't do that. And so I grabbed the towel and I stuffed it in Hugh Jackson's back pocket. And so I didn't think anything of it. We'll play the game. The game ends. I can see part of the towel hanging out of Hugh's oh, back pocket. Wow. And it, so it I just took you. it. I snatched it out. And I was doing this. Oh, you know how the, the fans do. Yeah, so they swing them. I was swinging it in the air. And I was running off the field. And I think I had two touchdowns that game, too. And So you I was just, feeling it. I was walking to the tunnel. And I, it, I don't know what made me do it. It, I, it wasn't planned. I was just walking to the tunnel. And I just sat down and, and did what I did. And it, for me, it was fun. I, I didn't take it no other way. I was having fun because, again, when you play the Steelers, they are known for defense. And I was going against their – dude, nothing but respect for every – dude, Joey Porter, James Ferrier, Larry Foote, Kendrell Bell, Casey yeah. Hampton, Ike Taylor, Palomalu, like, I can go on and on. And then when they got Ryan Clark, like I can go on and on and on with how many really good players they had on their defense. Mm -hmm. And outside of Palomalu and Ryan Clark, they all talk shit. Mm -hmm. All Ike Taylor talk shit. Joey Porter talk shit. Larry <laughs> Foote talk shit. Like them dudes talk so much. So for me, that made it fun. To go against that defense. Um, but I ain't gonna lie, I, I enjoy playing this. Day. I remember one time Palomalu hit me, man. I'll never forget this. And I got up, I said, Troy, you hit like a bitch. <laughs> Lavar, you know what he said to me? What he said, God bless you, TJ. <laughs> and he has a high pitched voice. He's like, God bless you, TJ. I felt so bad. I never, I never, ever, ever the rest of my career talk shit to him ever again. He and I he's that never, good of a dude, like. Period, like real life. Dude, I felt so bad. He was like, God bless you, TJ. And I was like, you asshole, why'd you say that to him? <laughs> right, right. But to yourself. I, yes, <laughs> yes. But I enjoyed playing the Steelers, man. It was always fun because of how good they were defensively. And again, I had my best games of my career against them. It should be noted. It should be noted that Jerome Bettis, the bus came on to one of our shows and said that he attributed that moment with the terrible towel as one of the pivotal moments that established the, the rivalry between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Like, how does that make you feel? I didn't, I mean, it doesn't make me feel any type of way because I wasn't doing it to start shit or anything, but I felt like, Anytime you play a good team, it should bring out the best in you. And I felt like that was me. Good team, I got it. Uh, we need to play, I got it. That was my mentality. Um, they that same year, they beat it, they knocked us out of the playoffs. And so they end up having the last laugh anyway. But those type of games, man, I, I live for it, it's fun and that's part of what I tell these guys as well. Man, enjoy this shit, man. Because it goes by so fast. Enjoy these moments because there's nothing you will do when you're done playing football that can equal what it was when you were playing. Nothing. Not the highs, the lows. There's, there's nothing like it. What is your proudest What's your proudest moment? I know you'll say family because I know how much you love your family and being a pillar for your family. So, I, I, And you can, by all means, touch on whatever you want. But give me some of your proudest, like when, you, when I say proudest moment, what comes to mind? What's the first thing that comes to mind when I said, 
what is what is TJ's proudest moment? I mean, honestly, it's what you said. Being a like LeVar people, I grew up, bro, with nothing. And a lot of us have, but when I say nothing, I mean nothing for the most part. My whole me and my brother sharing one box of macaroni. I'm the oldest one, so I'm letting them eat and then I'll eat whatever they don't eat. And, and so my proudest moment is just being able to support my family the way they need to be supported and especially my immediate family. And if being able to buy my mother a house, being able to help my brother out um, because of where we come from and a lot of guys come from nothing, but I'm talking, I mean, you know, you come from nothing when you under 10 years old and you got electricity in your name, Mm -hmm. you know, because it gets cut off in everybody else's name. So then they put it in my name. And so just, just that part of it, the fact that I was able to be a professional athlete, um, I love it because what we talked of earlier, you don't see many people come from where I come from and have as many obstacles that I had make it. I mean, you just, one year of football, you don't graduate. um, You get drafted late and you end up having a good career out of that. I mean, it's just, it's rare that, that you see that. And luckily for me, uh, I was one of those guys, but I couldn't point to just one thing. It can be a multitude of things, but really it would just be being able to support my family. I don't, I don't care about anything else other than, uh, I know I'm starting my kids off in a better position than what I was in. Is that your legacy? What's TJ Hushmanzada's legacy? If they buried you, put you in the ground, they was putting you in the ground today. What would you want to hear people saying about you while they were standing over top of you? That I'm willing to help anybody that needs help. That That's one thing. I, I, I train guys, LeVar, and I was telling somebody this the other day, you know how many guys I've trained and didn't charge them a dollar? Did, not a dollar, not, I mean, 25 cents. And I'm willing to help anybody. Mm-hmm. If you're willing to show me that you're going to work, I'm willing to help anybody. Like I've helped so many people get jobs. I help people in training. I help people connect with this person. I help people make money and I don't get a dollar out of it. Mm-hmm. Just done this. I just did that two weeks ago. Help somebody make millions and I should slap myself because I should get a, something out of that. But I didn't. Mm-hmm. And so just I'm willing to help anybody, man. And I, and people know that about me. If you show me um, that you're willing to do X, Y, and Z, then, then I'm going to help you as much as I can. And that's the legacy. Yeah, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to lend a helping hand. It doesn't matter who it is, black, white, don't matter what you are. Mm-hmm. Um, if I consider you a friend or I consider you a kid that I've mentored and you're showing me you want help, I'm going to help you. Mm-hmm. I like it, man. I like it. Anything, anything you want to add? And you want to no, promote want anything, to anything you want to add to it. The only thing I want to add is if they knew better, they'd do better. Every Saturday, tune in <laughs> to uh, Up On Game because that's – that's, and then it's – when you have Plexico on, it's going to be even better than this because of his trials and tribulations. Like, it, it's really crazy. Like, we literally got the dopest show out that uh, me, if they don't know about it, they depriving themselves. Yeah. Yeah, up on game. Make sure you tune in on Saturdays, 9 to 11 Pacific time. And if you're on the East Coast, uh, obviously that's noon to 2 o'clock. So make sure you check us out on that. Man, it's been a pleasure. And, and the stories are phenomenal. The stories get uh, get me going every single week just to to hear, you know, what we've come come from, what we've overcome, and the things that we do. And it's so funny because man, man, little LeVar had been asking. So when are you, you know, when are you bringing on TJ? When, when are you bringing on Plexico? And I was like, you know what? I've been waiting for the right time to do it. And I feel like the holiday season, Christmas going into to New Year, 
I felt like going back to the beginning, we just celebrated our one year um, show anniversary. So things are, are going really well on that front. And now up on game presents is, is out of the gates and, and running. I mean, that's part of a legacy as well that, that, you know, we just started off like, man, I guess I'll give this story super quick talking about helping people out. People may not realize I was out of media. I was out of it. Like I was, I was done. I was out and, and just was doing, doing mentoring and coaching and just living life. None of this would have, would have happened or been possible had you not been us not been on the field helping dudes out and you like, man, you need to come on over to Fox, man. Like, come, come, come on the lot. Like, I'm gonna get you. Like, I'm like, nah, I don't, nah, nah, I'm gonna help you out. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. And you, you basically pestered me into coming back to, to, to try to do it. And man, I'm glad you did, bro. Honest to God, I'm glad you did. Cause where things are now, it, it it's amazing and could have never happened had you not been urging me to like you got to get back into it. Like, so it all started from going in on FS1 and us doing hits on on Speak for Yourself, and here we go. We got one of the top new new podcasts. Um, our respect level, our 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 exposure level has gone to a whole nother place. I'm now on a morning show, you know, because of it. And man, I owe a ton, ton of credit to you. And I want to give you that credit on, on, on this interview that man, I, I was going in a different direction in life. Like wasn't even checking for, for this aspect of it. And, and so I appreciate you being that dude not only to the younger guys, but man, to us that, that, you know, as peers, as homies, like you motivated me and inspired me to, you know, try again. And, and, and it worked out. So appreciate you for that. Um, I know all the rest of the guys out there. I mean, I've been around guys that we have coached and how much they respect and admire who you are. You've always kept it 100 with, with everything that goes, goes on. And man, it had to be called up on game because it's just too, too much realness coming from, from everybody that's involved in it. And, and, and just to hear the things you've overcome to, to be where you are today, man, super proud of you. Uh, and, and super honored that, that man post career. Cause we didn't even know each other playing career. People may wow. not even realize that yeah. we didn't even know each other playing career. Um, and so post career, you know, we we connect and, and become more than just, you know, dudes that played against each other. Like you one of my brothers, man. Like you on my my like one of my guys. So appreciate you for that. And and appreciate us um having the opportunity to we actually again we get to do this every weekend and and hopefully it does turn into something more, which it, it appears that the trajectory is really good. So man, appreciate you coming on the show, bro. This has been another exciting edition of Up On Game Presents Conversations with a Legend. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out Up On Game Presents anywhere and everywhere you get your downloads and, and check out the feeds. Make sure you give us a star rating, uh, leave a comment, whatever it may be. But we appreciate you tuning in. And like I said, next week, anticipate Stretch Armstrong. We got Pantene Man right here. Anticipate Stretch Armstrong next week of the hey, Super LeVar. Friends. Hey, by the way, bro, you got people calling me Pantene, man, bro. Somebody <laughs> called me that shit the other day, bro. I swear to God. He was like, Pantene, man. <laughs> and then I didn't turn around. And he was like, TJ. And, I, and then he hit me. Ah, you got people calling we me got, hey, Pantene, man. We definitely need to get you a Pantene uh, hey, deal. A hair, somebody a hair shampoo called me deal. that, bro, the other day. Pantene, man. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's dope that's dope yeah. well to everybody out there have a happy merry merry christmas enjoy